Hello, welcome to my channel, Another Bibliophile Reads. My name is Greg, and I am here to do a week 18 update for my 55k page challenge. Now, this is where I have challenged myself to read 55,000 pages of print, digital, or audiobooks in um, 2022. And I don't make any distinction about what format a book is. A book is a book. It can be any format whatsoever. So what have I read? The first book I completed was an audiobook. Um, that was Lady Chatterley's Lovel, Lover by D.H. Lawrence. And I sort of read this for the May of the Moderns. I'm sort of participating in this event and sort of not participating in this event. Um, but this is a really rather interesting book. It is known as a uh, sex book. And I can understand that. There is a lot of sexuality in this book, probably a lot more than the, the readers of 1928 would be normally expecting. And um, is it really graphic? I've read more graphic sex in a modern novel, but D.H. Lawrence presented his readers with something that they may not have been expecting back then. And I hope this is not a big spoiler women can have sex lives. They can have sex drives. And um, that's what D.H. Lawrence was exploring. And I'm sure it was just horribly shocking to some people back then. I know um, just two weeks ago, I was in a Books A Million rummaging through some of their um, books. And um, a, a young girl, probably between 14 or 16, went up to her mother and said, can I buy this book? I don't know what book it was. I wasn't paying that much attention. And the mother was going, does that book have inappropriate content? And um, the girl said, no. And then the mother asked, um, I guess her older sister, does this book have inappropriate content? And the older sister went, no. So the mother said, okay, you can buy it. Now, I don't want to be too judgmental but um, I think that mother's just a little too concerned about um, what that young young girl will find in the book, whether it's inappropriate or appropriate. Um, and obviously, Lady Chatterley's Lover would have definitely qualified as inappropriate. But, you know, if I had a teenage daughter and she wanted to le read Lady Chatterley's Lover, I'd say go for it. But let's leave it at that. So the next book that I finished was a buddy read with Alan at Big Hard Books and Classics. And we read Breakfast of Champions by uh, Kurt Vonnegut. Now, um, I think this is a very good Kurt Vonnegut novel. Um, it's not altogether a cohesive novel story the, the way many novels are. It's just... Kurt Vonnegut being Kurt Vonnegut. Um, there are some illustrations in this book. Um, I will not show you all the illustrations because he um, very famously is um, showing you a picture of um, where the, the author Kilgore Trout publishes some of his stories. And he published them in um, Beaver magazines where they had wide open beavers in the magazine. And to prove that, um, Kurt Vonnegut showed an um, illustration of a beaver, the rodent with teeth that builds dams, and a um, other wide open beaver. And I won't show you that picture. I will show you this picture though. I think this is just a wonderful way that Kurt Vonnegut describes the whole, basically, philosophy book by Kilgore Trout. And this is a picture of Kilgore Trout's tombstone. And on the tombstone, he has a little phrase which I think many people should pay attention to nowadays. We are healthy only to the extent that our ideas are humane. And how many people in modern America 
are pushing ideas onto people that may not be humane. And um, in this, um, Kilgore Kraut becomes um, the most important writer in the United States, sort of. Um, and as I said, it's, it's just ideas that Kurt Vonnegut is um, spilling out. And I think it's just a wonderful experience to read this book, even though I think this book maybe has flaws or, or just maybe the flaw is that I am looking at the book in the wrong way and expecting a novel. And while this is a novel, it's not your ordinary type of novel. Um, I know another channel, um, Bits of Lit, recently reviewed this. Um, he was a lot less kind to uh, this novel. Um, I know he recommended not reading it, but I think this is a book people should read. Maybe not the first Kurt Vonnegut book you should pick up, Cat's Cradle or um, Slaughterhouse-Five would probably be better choices, but um, obviously I bought the Library American edition, so I like Kurt Vonnegut. The next book that I completed reading was for Horror Mayhem. And I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on the horror books I read because I, will, I have a whole other video, which I will link down below, about what I read. And that is um, Killer Flies. I then read um, The Bridge Over San Luis Rey. And this was for Maybe Midrash. And I will, I will do a Maybe Midrash video detailing my thoughts on this book more. Um, I enjoyed this a lot less than I thought I would. Um, most of that is because I was expecting more of an examination into the uh, problems of evil. And this is where, why God lets bad things happen to people. And the basic premise of the story is there are five pilgrims crossing over a bridge in Peru. It is 1714 and the bridge collapses and they all die and it is witnessed by a monk, and he is trying to examine why this happened. And that is a great setup, but after that, the book divides into basically short stories describing the lives of these pilgrims, and I just did not find the individual stories of these pilgrims all that entertaining or, elus or illuminating. But I'll, I'll talk about that more in a, a maybe Midrash video. After that, I read a graphic novel. Again, this will be part of my um, horror mayhem. This is about the life of Ed Gein, the, the famous uh, curial, serial killer, or not serial killer, just to say killer, who um, inspired uh, Norman Bates and Leatherface from the movie The Texas Chainsaw Massacres. And then I was reading a book for Gothic Horror Week, and that was The Sundial by Shirley Jackson. It was going pretty good. I got about 70 pages in, and then I was picking up the next morning, and I just felt, nah, I did, I did just didn't want to continue, and um, I DNF'd it. And um, there's a whole video by, by Criminali saying, yeah, it's okay to DNF books, and I agree, if it's not doing anything for you at the moment, DNF it, so I DNF'd the sundial. Um, there will be more of a description when I, uh, I do my gothic horror video. And those were all the books that I completed. Now the, the rest of them are all short stories for um, horror mayhem. I'll just go over them really briefly. The Foghorn by Ray Bradbury. The Midnight Meat Train by Clive Barker. Far Below by Robert Johnson. And um, The Flies, or just not The Flies, The Flies by Isaac Asimov. And um, I have not been giving individual page counts for all these books, um, but um, the total weekly page count for all that I read is 1,299. And that brings me to a yearly total of 22,366 pages read. And um, that's pretty good. I am on track to finish. Now, what have I been, what else am I currently reading? I'm actually reading an enormous, uh, quite a lot of books, probably too many books. I am coming near to the end of the Magic Mountain. I will finish this next week. 
And um, again, I'll probably do a whole video, but Magic Mountain is really, really a good book. Um, and there's two ways to read this book, I think. You can just read this as a novel and enjoy it for what it is and let some of the more detailed philosophies just sort of slide by, or you can study this book. I am not studying this book. I am just reading this book. And I know I'm missing a lot, but I'm enjoying this immensely. Another book I'm reading for the Humorous Book Group, and I'm sort of stalled out a little, even though I am enjoying this, and this is The Good Soldier Schweik by Yaroslav Hasik. Um, it's funny, but um, I just have so much else to read. I'm just slowing down. And I, I, I don't want to DNF this yet. I, I want to get back into this and see what this imbecile does when he actually gets involved in um, World War I. And I am reading um, two ebooks for the two month review podcast. Um, the first is Never Did the Fire by Damila Elite, and this is translated from the Spanish. Um, she's a Chilean author. This is a very esoteric novel. Um, it's sort of maybe set outside of time. There's talk about when Franco died and the narrator or the main character is wondering, was it a hundred years ago? Was it a thousand years ago? And she just may be confused. But so far, so good. And then I'm reading the diary of the translator who translated this book. And that is Catching Fire by Daniel Hahn. I am reading The Monk by Matthew Lewis. And this is a 400-page Gothic horror novel. Um, it's sort of corresponding to Gothic Horror Week, but um, I'm not going to finish it in Gothic Horror Week because it is just too long. But so far, I'm only on chapter two, but it is trashy. It is just amazingly lurid for the time period it was written in, and I am totally enjoying it. And lastly, I am reading for maybe Midrash, God by Reza Aslan. I am doing this as a buddy read, and uh, I've only gotten the first chapter read, but it's about uh, the earliest forms of religion in a prehistoric man. And this would be animal animism, animalism. And this is, um, the author even doubts if it is a religion. Is it a practice? Um, but he also describes a, a cave painting that was discovered. It's very hard to get to. It's called the Sorcerer. And it is a picture of a human with animal characteristics, or it's an animal with human characteristics. And um, there is theories that this picture was supposed to represent one of the early shamans. But there's also now theories that it represents the earliest form of God. So I will have to continue reading this. Um, but that's where I am. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye. I completely forgot to mention an audiobook that I finished last week, and that was The Deep Blue Goodbye by John D. MacDonald. And this is the first of his Travis McGee series. And um, this is a totally non-stressful book. It is a very simple story. It is very well told. It is very well paced. The characters are fairly interesting. It features a, um, I don't know what to call him. Traps McGee lives on a boat that he won in a card game. And he has rather unusual employment. He basically finds things for people that are worth money and then takes a percentage of what he finds to live off of. And um, this is a story of a woman who comes to him and um, her father made a lot of money during World War I illegally. And he hid the, the proceeds of that somewhere. And um, 
eventually died in prison because, of course, the father went to jail. And then the father's jail buddy came and, and wooed the, the daughter until um, he found the source of this money and then split. And um, the daughter hires Travis McGee to, to see if this money can be recovered. And um, it was just a very easy book. Um, it's like I said, it's a, it's a stress-free novel. It's pure entertainment, very enjoyable. And um, I liked it a lot. And um, I am going to continue with some more of the Travis McGee series. Um, I just happen to be traveling to Florida um, at the end of this month. So um, I will pick up an, another Florida adventure of Travis McGee for the end of May. And um, if you haven't read these books, um, give them a shot. They're, they're well worth it. At least the first one was. Okay.